Okay, awesome. Well, okay. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> yes, I am too. I'm coming out of Kansas City, Missouri. Great to meet you. Thank you for taking a minute out. And I'd like to begin our conversation before we get into your work by asking, mm. you know, four years ago, we were trying to figure out this pandemic. How are we going to get through it? How is it going to affect us long term? How did you get through that time period? And how did it change things for you? Honestly, I love the pandemic. If the pandemic wants to come around again, I am team <laughs> pandemic. Yes. Um, yes. As an introvert, I loved it. <laughs> But as a business owner, I really loved it. Yeah. Um, as a person who does a lot of uh, digital marketing, it was great because everybody was forced to be online. And a lot of people who were resistant to doing things like taking social media seriously or growing an email list actually realized like, hey, if we're going to survive this pandemic, we have to be in front of the right people. So for me, it was one of the best times <laughs> if I'm quite honest, in my business. Yeah. And like I said, if it wants to come around again, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> well, that's the <laughs> thing. That's your bread and butter. So let's get to exactly what you do is kind of, you know, in Facebook ads and being a consultant for online coaching. If I put you in front of a bunch of grade school kids, third graders at career day, and one of the kids was curious about what you did every day and said, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? I help people be found online. I can okay. help them be more visible. That's what I do. So what did you want to be in the third grade? What was your dream? I wanted to be a doctor, specifically a pediatrician, but that came more because my parents were doctors. I soon realized I hated blood. I am too emotionally attached to people. I'm an empath. So when people feel pain, I feel it too. And I'm like, mm -mm, this is not yeah. for me. So how did you acquire, what were the seeds that were planted into you early on that took root, that grew into your prowess in, you know, helping people online and getting visible and being in technology? How did all this happen? I think it didn't really, it was never something I planned to do. I am your, how can I say, best immigrant story. I <laughs> am a child of two immigrants. We moved to South Africa where I live now. And I did everything right. I went to school, I got good grades, I went to university, I got a degree, I went to work and I worked in corporate for many years. And I thought that was gonna be me until I was burnt out and I was dying. And I didn't know it back then that I was dying. I was just like, something's not right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause other people seem happier. And I'm just like leaving work at 10. Is this really what adulting is? Cause someone lied to me. Yeah. And in that being said, I was like, okay, okay, there has to be something else. And it was only after my husband proposed to me that I really took a moment to look at life and be like, is this really what I'm going to be doing for like, I don't know, the next 40 years? Like, yeah. And also back then I used to work in hospitality, but in uh, business development. Yeah. So I was going to live past my husband constantly, because if you know anything about hospitality, when the when everybody's having holidays, you're at work because that's how hotels work. <laughs> yes. You know, someone has to run them for you to go on that Christmas vacation, for you to go on, you know, that honeymoon, someone has to be there. And I was like, wow, this is going to be me. I'm just going to live past everyone. And I guess that's it. And it didn't feel right to me. And I was like, there has to be more. So I took a moment and looked inwards and said, what do I really like doing? Like of what I'm doing and the skills I've gained so far, what could I do? And the marketing always stood out to me. And then with it, I thought I would first be a social media manager, but that turned out mm, that no, don't do it. Don't, kudos to those people. Kudos yeah. to those people. I often see memes where social media managers are like happy and they have their phones out. They want to capture everything. I'm not that girl. Yeah. I'm the girl who wants to look at the data and look at the boring spreadsheets and be like, let's make decisions based on data. Yeah. And that's how I fell into Facebook ads. And I never really looked back, you know, from yeah. a people's point of view, I did want to always make sure that the right people's messages were shown. So that's also why I chose it from a service point of view. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, that was me. <laughs> so who's been a hero for you? Who's been an inspiration for you in your work? In my work per se, I would say the people, my clients, all of them. I am very picky and picking my clients. And I always pick people who have a serve, uh, a need to serve. They heart centered people. There are people who are here either to heal or to serve. 
or just not to be another person who'd be like, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. I feel like there's so many people out there just doing that. We just need someone who's going to help. You know, why can't that person be shown? And a lot of us need that. So I think my clients would be my current heroes, but I think ultimately it started as my mom. Like she was my first hero. Um, I think a lot of us can connect with that, but it's moved on to regular people that I see every day. I'm like, you're doing the work. I love this for you. So if you could meet anybody alive on the planet right now that you find fascinating, interesting, someone that would help you in your career, if you could hang out with them for a little bit, who would that be? Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Huh. Hmm. Who would it be? I like uh, Stephen Bartlett, a diary of a CEO. Yeah. Oh. Cause he has a very similar story to me. Like he ran an agency and now he's doing like podcasting and he's a dragon on dragon's den. And I really find him very insightful. Um, so yeah, maybe him like spending a day with him, I think would be like really profound and it's very similar stories. So, yeah. So you talked about the importance of your client, but at the end of the day, what gets you out of bed to do the work that you do? And to not only help them, to give of yourself to help them, but to also evolve as a human being. What is that collective gas in your tank every day? I think it has to be the lifestyle I'm craving. I love being at home. I love the fact that I'm wearing pajamas and no one will know. No yeah. one will know. Yeah. I also love the fact that I get to, you know, go for walks in the morning with my dog and I don't have to sit in a two hour commute. I love the fact that like, if my husband is like, Hey, we should go away. I have some extra days for leave. We can do that. I don't have to ask someone to do that. So really this magical freedom that comes with being a entrepreneur is my favorite part. That's the thing that motivates me. And I hope that one day when I myself have tiny humans, I can be a very present parent. You know, I can like do all the things, you know, go to games and bring sandwiches and I don't know, whatever kids need. Yeah, for sure. So, and there's a lot of things. So let me ask you this. What's the best advice you've ever gotten? Be consistent. Be consistent. The person that wins is the person who doesn't give up. It is, that's a, do you know what, why that like is just hitting me right now is because I had a conversation with one of my best friends about this and she was like, I don't know why that particular person keeps getting all these clients. Like she's not even really that good. And I was like, she's not, but she's consistent. Yeah. She shows up every single day and every single day she posts about something and every single day she gives out an offer and every single day she's there. She's the person you think about doing that thing, whether you like her or not is another question. But if you can stay consistent and you can outlast everybody else, there will be no other choice but you. So be consistent. So of everything that you've done up to this point in your life, what are you the proudest mm -hmm. of? I think taking a chance and becoming an entrepreneur. Everybody in my family, I'm the first entrepreneur in my family, actually. Everybody in my family is professionals and they're, I'm very proud of them. You know, I have a lot of doctors and engineers and people around. And when I told them I'm doing this, it was like very, hmm, like that was the response. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so I'm very proud that I did this and it's not like a little hobby as some people call it or, oh, all Carol does is play on Canva and Photoshop. <laughs> no, I do a little bit more than that. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm also I've also now become the family graphic designer, which is also fun. So, yeah, I'm really proud of my business. Yeah. I'm proud of that I get to help people and honestly, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So, I'm proud of that. So, if you had a dream tonight, ran into that version of you right before you went into corporate and got mm -hmm. that job and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice, based on the life that you know now as an entrepreneur, the wisdom you've gained over all these years, what advice mm -hmm. would you impart on that young version of you? I would honestly tell her it's going to be bad before it gets good. It's going to be bad before it gets good. There's a lot of people who are going to take advantage of your kindness and mistake it for weakness, but you know that that is not the truth. And in the end, everything works out as it should. You don't see it in the moment because you're so granular. But having the wisdom that I have now of time, the luxury I have of time of looking back, I'm like, 
wow, that was like a blimp in the whole sequence of things. Like it was nothing. So at the end of the day, everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, everyone around you, but you run the show. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? Hmm. Who do I think I am? (laughs) I think I'm pretty happy. I also think I'm a very patient person. Like that's one of my natural gifts. I am very empathetic and I just love life. You know, I often say like we get to be on this planet for a couple of years and who knows, the next location may not be as great, whatever you believe in. I mean, we could go to another planet, we could go up, we could go down, but whatever that location may be, we don't know. So let's make the best of this one. Like that's me. 100%. So what's the best thing about living in South Africa? Um, I think currently, right now, I'd say the exchange rate. Oh, yeah. True. (laughs) I think your money goes a bit further if you earn in another currency. But jokes aside, it's actually, South Africa is very beautiful. It has, like, so many great things. I mean, you get places like Cape Town that are like metropolises and there's like city and then you can go hiking and you get places like, you know, Johannesburg where it has all this like history and culture. And it's not, you know, everywhere in the world is dangerous because here's the thing. People will be like, oh my gosh, it's so dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous, but everywhere it's dangerous. I think you have to have a level of awareness of where you are, you just have to not be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there's easy ways to avoid that. And you'll have a great time. South African people are also very friendly. And if you come here during rugby season, which is now where we're in, oh my gosh, it's like the Super Bowl on steroids. It's like yeah. every single Sunday, Friday, sorry, I got it wrong. South Africans are going to kill me. Friday, <laughs> every single Friday is the Super Bowl. It's wow. wild. Everybody wears the jerseys. Everybody's having a barbecue. It's amazing. That's the crazy. culture. It's great. I love it. Yeah. It reminds me of Europe when they would have a soccer match. Just pandemonium, you know? Crazy. So let me ask I you this. It. Yeah. With with being have, having such a zeal for life, I'm curious. If we get off this call, time machine pulls mm-hmm. up to your house, you can see one event in human history with your own eyes. Where are you going? Ooh. I guess I want to see how it started. Yeah. I want to see how it started. Yeah. I just, I'm so curious of it. You know, like, I don't need to see how it ends because I'm probably not going to be there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'd love to see how it started. <laughs> yes. You know, I know scientists tell us that it's this and that, but I just want to see it. Yeah. I think it would be so beautiful to think like there was nothing and then there was something. Yep. Like, how incredible is that? That's, yeah. That's insane. It's yeah. mind blowing. So if anyone yeah. wants, if anyone is curious, they want to either hire you, they have more questions, they want to reach out, how do they do it? The good business. So they can reach out and you can see my name on the screen. It's Carol Cavale. That is also my website. And if you're keen on running ads, I have a wonderful quiz on that website, which in two minutes can tell you if you are ready to run Facebook ads or not. It's actually quite fun. Yeah. Wow, I love your energy. This has been so much fun. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for your time. Keep spreading that light to the world because it's so good. I love it. Thank you so much, Char. I really, really enjoyed this interview. It was like, I think what I needed. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Me too. Thank you. I appreciate it. Take care.